Well, we're now joined by the minister responsible for the environment and dealing with climate change, Stephen Gibbeau. Minister, thank you for joining us today. My pleasure, Michael. You know, I'm wondering how you are feeling right now about this conference, as you will be leading uh, the Canadian delegation, representatives from nearly 200 countries trying to hammer out an agreement. Just how challenging will this be? How do you feel taking on this challenge? We obviously thought long and hard with the Prime Minister about whether or not we would accept this uh, this offer that was being made to us by the United Nations to host us um, because it was supposed to be held in China because of COVID, the Chinese couldn't couldn't hold it. It had been postponed for two years. So there was a real desire by the international community that it would take place this year, and they turned to us for that. So it's a it's both a great honor, but also a, an important responsibility, which we don't take uh, we don't take lightly. Which is why we've been heavily involved in the in the negotiations and the discussions uh, internationally over the last. Uh, five, I mean, we were already involved, but we've been heavily involved over the last five months. Mm -hmm. More heavily involved, and uh, certainly a nod to this country that uh, it was approached by uh, the United Nations and the countries involved. But you know, I'm wondering about how you feel about our country's moral authority to be leading these discussions on biodiversity. We've just seen a report that tells us that nearly 20% of all native species in this country are facing the possibility of extinction. What does that say about Canada's moral authority going into these talks? I think, I mean, if you look at globally, the rate of extinction is 25%. Um, so we all have challenges there are no countries out there who can say listen we've we've solved this we we have everything right there are certainly leaders there are countries that, that are doing more than others there are some that are playing catch up um i i'd, I'd say canada has proven over the last few years that, that that we were stepping up to the plate um when we came into power in 2015 canada wasn't even protecting two percent of our oceans and coastlines we're now at more than 15 percent. we did that in seven years um, and, and we need to continue on, at this rate to, to achieve the ambitious target we've set for ourselves of protecting 30% of our lands and oceans by, by 2030. There's been a number of studies by environmental organizations in Canada, conservation organizations that say it's possible. We, we can do that. Now, it won't happen by, by chance. It won't fall uh, in, into our lap. We'll have to work hard with Indigenous people, with civil society, provinces, territories, even the private sector to achieve those goals, but but it is feasible. It is the goal, uh, and a couple of things that you mentioned there. Let's begin with 30 and 30, this idea of protecting uh, waters and oceans, 30% of it with uh, really uh, by uh, 2030. So you're looking about eight years from now. Uh, Canada is nowhere near that goal right now. It's my understanding we're, we're about half of, of that goal mark, uh, roughly speaking. What do you see as the, the, the low-hanging fruit that Canada can tackle right away? What do you see Canada tackling in seven, eight years' time to meet that goal? Well, as I said, when it comes to ocean, we, we protected in the last seven years, 13% of our, of our oceans. Um, so we can do it, but we clearly we've, we've proven that, that it is possible to do it. What are we doing? We're, we've intensified our, our, our discussions with indigenous people, uh, with provinces and, and, and territories. We're, we're, we've committed uh, billions of dollars, five billions of dollars for, for, for nature in Canada, which is orders of magnitude larger than anything that had been done before in, in, in this country. So we're, we're confident that between those two elements, we will be able to, to achieve our, 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 our targets. Um, we will have, I hope, in the coming days, good news to announce in terms of our, our work with Indigenous people and some provinces and, and, and territories in terms of the nature agreements, so where it's not only the federal government, but provinces and territories that also commit to protecting 30% of lands and oceans by by 2030. So I, we have our work cut out for us, for sure. Um, and, and and I'm not saying it's a done deal by any stretch of the imagination. But what I'm saying is that it is within the realm of possibilities. We can do this. Mm -hmm. Now, more than once, you've you've mentioned indigenous leadership when it comes to protecting biodiversity. Uh, talk to us about the importance of indigenous leadership. How you're hoping to highlight that at this conference. Well, that's a good question. And in fact, when the United Nations asked us to host uh, the, the, the conference, one of the things we told them is that we wanted to make Indigenous-led conservation one of the central theme 
of, of, uh, of this conference. So we will have uh, in, in Indigenous presence being felt throughout, throughout the conference. Um, indigenous leaders will be invited to, to, to speak. Uh, the, Canadian, the Canadian Pavilion features uh, Indigenous art that's largely related to nature. Um, uh, as part of what you know, thousands of people will be able to see in, 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 in the coming two weeks from all, from all over the world. So we wanted to ensure that they had a, their rightful place at, at, at this international table and they could talk about what they're doing and their vision uh, for, for, for conservation and, and for the future of, of Canada and, and the planet as well. Now, as you know, uh, in Ontario, the, the green belt established by the province is now uh, being challenged with development, encroaching on that, gre uh, that green space put aside by, uh, by Ontario. And it, it does make me wonder about the importance with which Canadians attach to biodiversity, whether or not they understand biodiversity. Certainly a lot of the language has been around climate change. But what would you say to Canadians right now about the importance of this conference and why biodiversity is important to protect? We, we can't hope to have a prosperous and thriving societies, whether in Canada or internationally, if, if our development continues to be made at the detriment of living conditions on this planet. For, for, for decades, there was this idea that somehow humans and the natural world were separated. What are we if not the air we breathe, the water we drink, and, and, and the food we eat? And, and, and those things come from nature. Um, so we need to protect nature to protect ourselves uh, and, and some people will do it for for, for, for for the beauty of nature and for the interesting value of, of nature itself but if you're not doing it for that then do it do it for you as as humans we we, we are part of this we are linked to, 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 to the natural world the more we degrade the natural world the more as a society as a species humans will will suffer uh, and, and reversely, the more we protect, the better off we will be collectively here in Canada and around the world. Minister, appreciate the time today. Uh, we'll speak again before the conference is through, no doubt. Great pleasure. Thank you, Michael. Thank you.